Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, weekend hunters of all ages, it's Sean with Daryl, Joe, Jared, and maybe in a few minutes, Madison. But we're bringing you an episode today. Missouri 2022 deer season has ended, and we have gotten everybody together that we can here on Microsoft Teams, and we're going to do a little season recap for you. Obviously, if you have followed along with us this year, uh, you've seen our kills or lack of kills or mistakes or whatever but there's some other stuff that you might not have heard about and so we're just going to take this time uh, as you watch this episode to just kind of recap the season with you and just kind of go over uh, what happened so we're going to start off today with mr daryl daryl fire away man what what you got how did the season go um tell us all about it My season was jinxed from these guys saying, hey, come shoot some video and some deer with us. That's all I'm going to say about it. I'm done. You guys are next. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, season was really cool, man. I really appreciate you guys uh, inviting me on uh, with everything that I can bring. And uh, just looking forward to doing some more. Uh, my season was a little bit of a roller coaster. Uh, early season, Sean went with me. Uh, you guys seen the good buck that we had on camera, three and a half year old. He was high on my list just because of my farm. Uh, you know, if he gets off the farm, somebody else is going to get him. Uh, we were able to uh, recover that deer, not the way we wanted to. Uh, we found him the first part of October. Uh, we found him uh, dead on the property, uh, which was a really, really kick in the pants. And uh, so at that time, you know, we had uh, we had one other, one other good buck on camera. Our, probably our oldest buck. He was about five. Uh, he was a really big 12 pointer. And uh, shortly after uh, after the rut started around here, about the second week of gun season, uh, he was killed about six miles from the farm. Uh, being said, we, we didn't have the doe numbers on the property that we would like to have. Uh, so that buck probably traveled to where they were does. I mean, that's what we were talking about a little bit ago. And uh, so with both those bucks being gone, and again, I, I pride myself on saying I'm not a trophy hunter, um, but every hunter wants to kill a decent buck. Uh, so no does being killed on a farm this year. I mean, from the video you guys see of what I've seen, um, I've got some more video to come. Uh, that's all I saw. I saw lots of does. Uh, well, not a lot, but the same does all the time. In the same, no matter what stand I was in, I was seeing the same thing. Uh, my public land stuff was uh, decent this year. I uh, didn't actually get to see a lot of, of deer, period. Uh, one of the spots that we hunt in uh, got pressured a lot more than what we had anticipated. Um, some new people had found it and really put the pressure in there. Uh, they were doing a lot of, of stock hunting, you know, to where they were just going in and walking around. You know, we've got stands set up out there, um, lots of cameras. Uh, they were passing by cameras multiple times. Uh, even in the same day, they were passing through at different times. Uh, so we had a lot of pressure out there. Uh, and that's that's kind of the way it went, you know. But uh, a lot of good things uh, being part of this, this team here. You know, doing the self-film things is really, really tough. You know, we've touched on that several times. And, you know, I know you guys are shot video before but really this year you guys focused in on self-filming you know we got uh, a lot of pre-footage and a lot of after footage you know and uh, getting that deer kill on camera that's key you know if you're going to shoot a tv show that's key and uh, you know we we did really well i think with what we started and we're growing and i think we're going to make it better uh but i mean you know we the one the first guy that gets that kill on camera, I mean, this thing's going to skyrocket. And, I mean, when you guys are watching the hunting video, do you want to see a guy retrieve a deer all the time? No. You know, so you, you want to you want to see that. And that, that's what it's about. And, you know, I put a lot of effort into making sure that, you know, my camera was always right. You know, my deer position was where I wanted them to be. And uh, for me, I, uh, I I got some chicken boy on and my tags and, uh, that's what I'm having for dinner tonight. Our season just ended yesterday. So uh, I'm, I'm going to have a tag soup this year. Uh, but again, for me, it's not always about the kill. I would love to kill the deer. 
but uh, you know, just, just being outside, being part of the outdoors is, is really what I like doing. Absolutely, and and, and you know, you you kind of mentioned this a little bit, but uh, just because you didn't necessarily kill anything doesn't make you a vital part of this team and what you've done with uh, connections and sponsors and oh, no, uh, no, partnership. No, 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 and so I know I appreciate that, and I know Madison and these guys do, and and your connections, and just excited to see where things go, and how uh, how our channel grows some more. So, uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, some great things coming up, man. Uh, you know, we uh, this is the first time we've all kind of got together. I mean, yeah, it's, it's you know Zoom meeting type thing, but I mean, it's uh, really good to sit down and talk to everybody. I mean, you know, we've been on here for a while now before we get started. And, We've all got to share some stuff and, and, and talk a little bit. You know, for me, you know, this is the first time really for me to talk to Joe and Jared. And, uh, you know, it, it's been interesting. And I, I can tell from just this little bit of conversation we've had, uh, we're, we're going to get along great. And, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of cool stuff. We've all been working on the side, you know, to try to make everything better for next year. And, uh, you know, our season in Missouri, you know, it ended yesterday. And we put everything we had into it. I mean, if I, if I wasn't busy working, I was hunting. You know, I spent every weekend, as those the, the name says, we are the weekend hunter. And, uh, you know, the one thing that we don't, you know, put a lot of effort on is, yeah, we may be weekend hunters, but, you know, we, we all spend our vacation hunting, or at least I know I do. Sean, I know you spend a lot of your vacation hunts, you know, and, uh, you know, for me, you know, I've got a family and, uh, you know, that, that takes away from it. And that's, that's a big sacrifice. And that, that's really hard to deal with a lot of times, you know, and uh, as being a dedicated hunter, as I know you guys are too, you know, we take every minute we got during that season and we put it out there. And again, like you said, for me, I'm a guy who kills deer every year with this year being an exception, obviously, uh, you know, so uh, I take it, I take it with a grain of salt and, uh, you know, I look, I look forward to, to doing something else. I mean, we got turkey season coming up. We got a lot of stuff going on you know our season ended yesterday but that just means today our next season started yep because now yeah. i got to start prepping and planning and getting everything ready and uh you know you know we talked about it a little bit before we got going here you know uh turkey season's coming up i spent a lot of time when i got free time here coming up i spent a lot of time shed hunting i'm getting the property ready i'm making changes you know and, and you talked about my season uh my permission form it turned into a different place after rut. Uh, my deer that were there went on different feeding patterns than what I'm used to. You know, we've been on that property for eight years now. I have seen stuff this year that I had no idea the deer were doing. They, they changed everything that I was used to. Uh, Sean, you've been to my property. You've seen my stands. They're, they're set up in different areas for different reasons. And uh, nowhere that I had a stand this year, once the rut came on in late season, none of those stands were in position to where the deer have been in the past. Um, so I learned a lot. Uh, so I'm going to have to make some strategic moves and uh, hopefully, you know, we'll, uh, we'll learn from your mistakes, not necessarily mistakes, obviously, but everything's a learning curve. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, for the sake of time and uh, the recording software, we're going to keep going. Uh, Absolutely. Joe, why don't you uh, take over from here? Tell us about your uh, your season one. Oh, it was awesome. First, I apologize to Daryl. Didn't realize we jinxed him so much, and uh, <laughs> I'm sure he'll kill some big birds and one up us. No, no worries there. Uh, season, I mean, I'm with Daryl. If I can be out in the woods, I don't have to kill anything. If I learn what deer are doing and get to pattern and that that's all experience man you can't you can't buy something like that so um uh the biggest thing for me is kind of getting permission from landowners around here we've got public land near me but in order to be successful on public land i feel like you gotta you gotta hunt early like september october and after that pressure's on and those deer are used to people and they're not they're not getting out in those areas so um finding private land to hunt is pretty huge but yeah i mean we we happen to be successful this year um on some private land but for the most part i seen i seen plenty of deer and i think it was in a previous episode 
um, you, you, you and Sean, Daryl and Sean were talking about if you're not going to, uh, if you don't pass on it at the end of the season, you should go ahead and shoot it this season or yeah. early in the season. That's kind of probably what I should have done with a doe. Um, but I was able to harvest that buck that I learned really bad weather. Just go ahead and still sit in it because, bro, that morning was brutal, like brutal. But they were up, they were moving. So that was that was a that was a blast. Um, but like I said, there's if I can be out in the woods, I'm out in the woods. Um, I've got a young family, so with you guys, I mean, it's you kind of make a little bit of sacrifice. But if I'm not with family, I'd rather be out in the woods hunting. Like I don't have to watch TV shows. I don't have to watch anything. Like people love TV and movies. Man, forget that. Just send me out to the woods till dark and see what I can see. Um, and scouting, it was pretty huge too. Eve and after the rut, I realized that probably the best time to hunt is over a food source in the evening, because that's when they'll get out. That's when they'll uh, recharge and refuel. So. Man, I learned a ton, really just being out in the woods. And you ended up at, with one this year or two? Yeah, yeah. I shot that buck at uh, your mom and dad's. And I could have shot I could have shot a couple of does, but it just it didn't present itself right, timing and all that good stuff. So I planned this year, into this year, at least a, you know, mature, a mature doe and a mature buck would be my goal for this for this year for sure right and okay. so getting that learning how to film like i really haven't filmed much that it, at all really turn your yeah. phone sideways hey, I, okay one of those things i learned and i've been doing pretty good at that um, but what i want to do is get a gopro that kind of overlooks everything but also have a camera mounted like a like a real a real decent camera um, for like a kill shot because you're right there. Everybody can see you know see deer or retrieve deer, but you want to see that kill shot, which I mean totally makes sense, man. And yeah. it helps you for playback is to be able to see where was your shot placement. Yeah, yeah. The one the GoPro was on my head when I shot that buck, but it was it was terrible footage. Really, that was the closest <laughs> thing we had to a kill shot. The entire season. Yeah, if that's if, if that's our standard, we're going to be killing it this year. <laughs> I'll come back to that when I'll talk. But Jared, you go ahead and uh, go through your season. Uh, I mean, I had a great 2022 season. So this season was the first time that I actually was able to I was able to harvest my biggest buck uh, to date with a bow, um, which was amazing. That was my favorite experience of 2022 uh i was able to take my wife out hunting uh for the first time she's never she didn't grow up deer hunting uh so i took her during gun season she was mostly a bystander uh she had a gun with her but never really got a shot uh but she fell in love with it and it was so much fun to see her fall in love with that as well um i was i mean i didn't i had a couple opportunities during gun season uh, things didn't work out, but the day after gun season, uh, I went back out after with my bow and took advantage of a mature doe that walked out. Um, you know, she just got a little too close, a little too slow. So, uh, took advantage of that and put the freezer. So, uh, I couldn't resist that one. Uh, then after that, I didn't get much of a chance to, I mean, I, I work quite a bit, uh, so my time out in the woods is not as much as you guys. Um, I would like to increase that for 2023, but I just have to be very specific about what I'm my hunting trips. Uh, but with you, I'm I'd love to be out there. I'd prefer to be out there than do anything else. Uh, looking forward to 2023. I am planning on taking my kids. I've got three kids, seven, five, and three. Uh, I'm going to take my oldest daughter turkey hunting, hopefully deer hunting this year, set her up in a blind with a crossbow. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that and just seeing her fall in love with it as well. 
uh, taking them fishing, maybe tag along turkey hunting. We'll see how that goes. But just to include my family a lot more there. Um, and then, you know, I'm going to get a custom made rifle, not crazy, but I'm going to get a custom rifle for, for me this year, uh, looking at a six, five Creedmoor so I can, you know, take advantage of those long shots and keep the freezer full. So we'll see how it works out, but I'm excited for it. Uh, definitely happy with how 2022 worked out. Definitely thankful for the property that we were able to hunt this year. Uh, that's more access than I've ever had before. Uh, so looking forward to 2023. Yeah. Um, I know Madison is uh, busy with some personal stuff at the moment. So he, uh, he got the dough this year. Um, as you saw on our episodes, he had a opportunity on pitchfork. He didn't get it on, on footage. Uh, the GoPro uh, that he was using, um, just kind of farted out on him at that moment, but, um, you know, he was able to take the dough and he was really happy with that. And she was a big dough. And so, uh, he's got plenty of meat in the freezer and he's excited. He didn't go as much as he uh, probably should have. Uh, Daryl, can you tell us why he probably didn't get go as much? Well, you know, it's probably a bad deal for me to talk about Madison with him not here to defend himself. But, you know, Mr. I got to fish and golf and play <laughs> my kayak. I mean, I got to give him a hard time. I mean, you know, Madison's got a lot of things going on and uh, you know, his YouTube deal with his fish and stuff. I mean, it's really great stuff. And uh, I'm not sure why he's not called a weekend fisherman. But, you know, we can we can make that change later. But, uh, no, I mean, uh you got to do what you got to do, but I mean, again, he's outside. Oh yeah. Uh, he's in the outdoors. He's doing what he likes to do. But again, I mean, he really, he really touches on the fact, you know, that he's a weekend hunter. I mean, he hunts on the weekends when he wants to, otherwise, you know, he's golfing, he's fishing and, uh, like, at least he's outside and, you know, you know, Jared touched on it too, you know, and, uh, Joe, like you said, young family taking them kids out there, man, that, that's better than anything. You know, Sean, his boy, you know, he, he goes during year season, uh, turkey season, fellas, I can tell you right now, my oldest daughter, she's killed a deer with a bow. She's killed a deer with a rifle. But, uh, you know, two years ago, I asked her on her birthday, uh, you want a deer rifle or a shotgun? She said a shotgun. <laughs> she's in love with turkey. So, I mean, you're going you're gonna to get to see her eventually. Uh, I was hoping she was going to be here this evening to kind of sit down with us. But, uh, uh, yeah, she's, she's out there taking a kid. It, you know, I would give up my season if I could take kids every day. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's there's just nothing about it. You know, when, when you get to see that experience, like I said, with my oldest daughter, I got to experience it with her first turkey, her third turkey, her fifth turkey, <laughs> her first bow kill, you know, her first rifle kill. I mean, it was awesome. So, I mean, that's always the best thing out there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and we, if Gabe was here, I'd have him on here just because he was on a couple episodes with us and, uh, he didn't he didn't get anything this year, but he's been uh, kind of spoiled since his his first uh, his first and <laughs> only deer that happened within like five minutes of uh, shooting light in his very first season. So uh, as far as me and my season goes, you guys have been watching. I've documented everything. Uh, I had the few weeks off there in the middle of the season uh, where we had recorded our conversation. Daryl, uh, you, me and Madison. And yep. um, so I'm thankful for that. There was a couple of weeks where Jared and Joe had some footage from their stuff. So I'm thankful for them. Um, we are running up against time here for this episode, but uh, my season, I got uh, my doe right away. I think that was late October uh, guys. I think when we went up and hunted uh, up around the lake and then I, the last week in a rifle season, I've got my little eight pointer. Uh, I did ultimately have a big learning experience that we'll touch on in the next video with my platform. But, uh, I think, I think that's key and worth noting here is, um, you, you get what you pay for. And, um, and I'll, I'll go into that here in, in our next video, but I had an event where I nearly fell out of my tree stand, uh, as I stepped onto my saddle. And, That's uh, the one thing I wanted to have on camera, Sean. Yeah, <laughs> if I had had the GoPro mounted over my head, we would have. Uh, very scary experience of stepping on a platform and feeling that just give out. Uh, and so I'm very glad I had my um, 
my lineman's rope and uh, still was holding on to the tree with one hand. So I maintained that three points of contact uh, with the tree and uh, felt felt a lot better once I reached the ground after that uh, after that moment. But um, overall, I was out there every every weekend, every chance I could get. Uh, I realized that an amazing wife this season that um, uh, allowed me to go and. You know, she was a trooper. She, she let me go, and I think all of us uh, had the same story. And and Daryl, I'm sure for you, for years of hunting, um, and just the time I got to meet her, your wife's a sweetheart. Of course, I know these guys' wives and grew up with them. So, uh, you know, it's it's great. So I think that's a real undervalued and underappreciated aspect of uh, being a weekend hunter is. Uh, the wives and the toll it takes on them. And in some families when the wife is the hunter and she goes hunting too, you know, whatever. Um, it's just definitely something to be appreciated. And so uh, kudos to all of our wives and all of our families uh, for going through that. So we're going to, because they put up with a lot. Yeah. Yeah, they do. We're going to wrap up uh, this video and uh, record another one here for you in a moment. So anyways, we appreciate you sticking around. If you like this video, Please remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share. And remember at The Weekend Hunter, it's more than a channel name. It's a lifestyle and a way of life. We'll see you on the next episode.